Good morning, friends. We gather on this the second Sunday in Lent as we, we, make, we make our way with Christ uh, to Jerusalem and ultimately through Jerusalem to Golgotha, the cross and the grave. Um, as I said uh, last week, and uh, I'll probably say again, I really do encourage you to make um, this Sunday um, practice a discipline of yours as we walk with Christ this Lenten tide to see again uh, the love of God um, and the, the love of God for the world, um, so that we might love the world more fully as, as well. Uh, a couple of announcements for our common life. Um, do take a close look at your currents to see uh, what is ahead from uh, our Thursday night studies to our, our um, Palm Sunday concert and such. Uh, but a particular reminder that next Sunday is our continuation of our annual meeting. So following the, the morning service, we'll gather in the Undercroft for breakfast and um, the work of the church. We will elect our vestry officers, our vestry members for the coming um, three-year term. Uh, we'll hear about the, the, the life of the church last year in, in celebration and look forward to the, to the life of the church in this coming year. Uh, as well. So much to celebrate, much to share, uh, and so I encourage you to join us and to plan to join us next Sunday uh, following the nine o'clock service for our annual meeting. Um, with that, friends, let us just be still for a moment to quiet our hearts, to gather our minds as we prepare ourselves for this time of prayer and praise with one another.
Bless the Lord all our sins. His mercy endures forever. Jesus said, the first commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most holy and merciful Father, we confess to you and to one another and to the whole communion of saints in heaven and on earth that we have sinned by our own fault in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. We have been deaf to your call to serve as Christ served us. We have not been true to the mind of Christ. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. We confess to you, Lord, all our past unfaithfulness, the pride, hypocrisy, and impatience of our lives. We confess to you, Lord, our self-indulgent appetites and ways, and our exploitation of other people. We confess to you, Lord, our anger at our own frustration and our envy of those more fortunate than ourselves. We confess to you, Lord. Our intemperate love of, our wor- of worldly goods and comforts and our dishonesty in daily life and work. We confess to you, Lord. Our negligence in prayer and worship and our failure to commend the faith that is in us. We confess to you, Lord. Accept our repentance, Lord, for the wrongs we have done, for our blindness to human need and suffering, and our indifference to injustice and cruelty. For all false judgments, for uncharitable thoughts toward our neighbors, and for our prejudice and contempt toward those who differ from us. For our waste and pollution of your creation, and our lack of concern for those who come after us. Restore us, good Lord, and let your anger depart from us. Favorably hear us, for your mercy is great. Accomplish in us the work of your salvation. And that we may show forth your glory in the world. By the cross and passion of your Son, our Lord. Bring us to all your saints to the joy of his resurrection. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life.
the Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, whose glory it is always to have mercy, be gracious to all who have gone astray from your ways and bring them again with penitent hearts and steadfast faith to embrace and hold fast the unchangeable truth of your word. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God forever and ever. And bless, O Lord, your children as they gather to hear your word. In this season of Lent, grant them grace to turn toward you, to love whatever is just and true and good. Amen. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. For the promise that he would inherit the world did not come to Abraham or to his descendants through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. If it is the adherents of the law who are to be the heirs, faith is null and the promise is void. For the law brings wrath, but where there is no law, neither is there violation. For this reason, it depends on faith in order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all his descendants, not only to the adherents of the law, but also to those who share the faith of Abraham, for he is the father of all of us, as it is written, I have made you the father of many nations. In the presence of the God in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that do not exist. Hoping against hope, he believed that he would become the father of many nations, according to what was said, so numerous shall your descendants be. He did not weaken in faith when he considered his own body, which was already as good as dead, for he was about a hundred years old, or when he considered the barrenness of Sarah's womb. No distrust made him waver concerning the promise of God, but he grew strong in his faith as he gave glory to God, being fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. Therefore his faith was reckoned to him as righteousness. Now the words, it was reckoned to him, were written not for his sake alone, but for ours also. It will be reckoned to us who believe in him, who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was handed over to death for our trespasses, and was raised for our justification. The word of the Lord. Please join me in reading verses from Psalm 22 responsively by half verse. Praise the Lord, you that fear him. For he does not despise nor abhor the poor in their poverty, neither does he hide his face from them. But when they cry to him, he hears them. My praise is of him in the great assembly. I will perform my vows in the presence of those who worship him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied, and those who seek the Lord shall praise him. May their heart live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. For kingship belongs to the Lord. He rules over the nations. To him alone all who sleep in the earth bow down in worship. All who go down to the dust fall before him. My soul shall live for him, my descendants shall serve him. They shall be known as the Lord's forever. They shall come and make known to a people yet unborn.
Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Jesus began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd of his disciples and said to them, if any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord May I speak in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Long before Christ looked to the cross as a symbol of life and joy and love, it had been used for centuries as a tool most recently by the Roman state, but long before by Assyrians and Babylonians, by Greeks and Phoenicians, and now by Rome as a tool for domination, a tool for humiliation, and a tool, of course, of course for death. But what Rome saw as a tool, Jesus quickly understands as a symbol a symbol for all that destroys, all that humiliates, all that dominates in our lives. And so he saw that symbol alive throughout the world around him. He saw it, of course, alive in, within the Roman Empire, an empire that constituted its relationship with Israel as one of domination through military force, through uh, economic taxation, by the subjugation of all the customs and practices of ancient Israel to the practices of ancient Rome. But it wasn't the only power to use tools for destruction. Jesus saw these same powers at work within the very religious community from which he came. He saw in the Pharisees and Sadducees and chief priests of his day a religious authority dominating and domineering of the people of Israel, demanding everything from tithes to adherence to a law that they themselves, the elites of the of the of the, the, the temple would not fulfill, could not fulfill, all to uphold a practice and an institution that was drawing life from the very people it served. He saw this power 
of domination alive within the economic society of his day. Whether it was Herod on the one side or landowners on another, he called the, or tax collectors on another. He called each to a better practice of care for the people within their society, challenging them to not build up barns and silos of wealth for themselves that they, in fact, would never utilize. And yet each one of those communities was using the tools of its day from taxation to economic ownership to religious practices to dominate a people. Each one used a cross of its own making to destroy a nation. And Jesus said, let us lay down those powers and take up a new cross together. Let us take up a cross that is related to one another, a cross that brings life to one another, a cross that in fact brings life to you as an individual and to us as a community. It is the cross of love. It's not simply a cross of burden. Every cross is a burden. But it is a particular type of cross. A cross of generosity. A cross of sacrifice. A cross of caring for another as fully as we care for ourselves. Those crosses of destruction exist still today, of course. We see the cross of domination alive in the Ukraine today. As Russia continues its destruction of a people beyond its borders. We saw the cross of destruction on display on October 7th in the terror of Israel. And we sadly see it continuing today in the terror of of Gaza. We see as well the, <clears throat> the cross of domination in our economic world, not only in the grand disparity between the ultra-wealthy and um, the ordinary poor, but in the call for all to subject their lives to work in order for a hoped-for promise of security and happiness, even while families are torn apart by the time and the demands of the workplace. To these same crosses, Christ continues to invite us to take up a new way of life. This Lent provides us an opportunity to see again and again the way of Christ, the way of his cross, the way of generosity, the way of sacrifice, and the way of love. In order that we individually might more readily lay aside the crosses that are placed upon our backs, in order that we might take up the, the cross of Christ that he lays before us a pathway unto life, life for you and life for our neighbor. May we take up his cross. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God.
With all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Bonnie, our bishop, and for all the clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Joseph, our president, for the leaders of the nations, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those on our parish cycle of prayer, David and Lynn Cameron, Libby Candler and Dan Hughes, Sherry Carlton, Zach and Allie Carr and children, Ava and Lorelei, Tom Casey, Dave and Sue Chocolates, Bill and Deb Champion III, Stephen and May Jean Chan, for this city, for every city and community, and for those who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the good earth which God has given us, and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For Alice, Barbara, Bill, Deb, Doreen, Edie, Emily, Emma, Gavin, Gerard, Jed, Jim, Kathleen, Linda, Lizzie, Lori, Matt, Miranda, Peggy, Rose, Sarah, Susie, and Tom, for the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphans, and for the sick and the suffering, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, and for all the departed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, and degradation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That we may end our lives in faith and hope without suffering and without reproach, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. In the communion of all saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all of our lives to, to Christ our God. You, o Lord our God. Hasten, O Father, the coming of your kingdom, and grant that we, your ser servants who live now by faith, May with joy behold your Son at his coming in glorious majesty, even Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Since we are justified by faith, we have grace through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who has given us access to his grace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us offer one another a sign of God's peace. Peace with you, King. Those who are celebrating a birthday or an anniversary are invited and encouraged to come forward for a prayer and blessing. Happy birthday. Friends, let us pray. Oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray on your servants as they begin our leader. 
Bless the Lord, your servant, as she be with us, and as she be surrounded by your joy, and preceded by your peace this day and every day. And bless the Lord, your servant, as she begins another year, as she be surrounded by your joy, and preceded by your peace all the days of her life. Let us ascribe to the Lord the honor due his name. Bring offerings and come into his courts.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you. Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, you bid your faithful people cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast that fervent in prayer and in works of mercy, and renewed by your word and sacraments, they may come to the fullness of grace, which you have prepared for those who love you. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And we celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people, the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever.
And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. My flesh is food indeed, and my blood is drink indeed, says the Lord. My flesh is food indeed, and my blood is drink indeed, says the Lord. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood dwell in me and I in them. My flesh is food indeed, and my blood is drink indeed, says the Lord. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and the heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you, as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord, to him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Christ give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourselves, to take up your cross, and to follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks. Thanks to God.